Tim Cook and Apple want to make it look like they're losing the AI race on purpose. They want to let their competitors, OpenAI and Meta, outspend them on AI chips by billions and billions of dollars while they sit back with a smirk on their face, relaxing and sipping margaritas. Do you want to find out why Apple wants to lose the AI arms race, but by doing so, ultimately win it? Well, by the end of this video, you'll learn just that. You'll find out why Apple isn't trying to compete with OpenAI, what Apple's AI strategy really is, and why they'll come out on top as the best AI company in the end. As you know, the hype over AI is getting out of control. Companies like Meta, Microsoft, and OpenAI are pouring ungodly amounts of money into AI chips and GPUs. AI stocks like Nvidia and AMD are skyrocketing, and all you hear in the news is AI this and AI that. Recently, Mark Don't Call Me a Robot Zuckerberg announced that his company, Meta, is going to purchase 350,000 high-end GPUs from NVIDIA with their goal of reaching AGI or artificial general intelligence. By the end of this year, we're gonna have around 350,000 NVIDIA H100s or around 600,000 H100 equivalents of compute if you include other GPUs. We are just getting started. Now let's pause here for a moment and digest this because it's hard to even comprehend. Each one of these 350,000 H1 GPUs costs around 25 to $30,000. So Zuck will be spending roughly 10.5 billion US dollars alone for these GPUs. And to put that into perspective, that's more than three times the net worth of the entire country of Belize. On top of that, Microsoft, OpenAI's largest backer, has already spent tens of billions of dollars on NVIDIA GPUs. OpenAI is spending so much money on AI chips that Sam Altman is looking to build his very own AI chips to cut costs. To put everything into perspective, analyst Stacy Rasgon found that $48.1 billion worth of GPUs and $16 billion of AI chips would be needed if ChatGPT were just one-tenth the size of Google. And that's for each and every year. That's an absolute insane amount of money. If ChatGPT were ever the same size of Google, it would cost almost half a trillion dollars per year to run the hardware alone. What's strange is that you rarely hear news of Apple and Tim Cook purchasing AI GPUs and or chips. They barely even mention AI. In one of their recent keynote addresses, they avoided the words artificial intelligence altogether. So why, when most of the magnificent seven tech companies are throwing themselves at NVIDIA like a cheap date, Apple is off on its own in the corner of the dance floor looking sad and dorky, seemingly missing out on the greatest tech advancement in human history? Well, to answer that, you have to ask yourself this. Is Tim Cook just stupid and making one of the greatest mistakes as a CEO of all time? Or is Cook and Apple scheming something up, something that will surprise everyone, something that will put Apple on top of the entire AI leaderboard at the end of the day. I'd put money down on the ladder, but before I head off to a Vegas casino and put $10,000 down on that bet, it's important to understand artificial intelligence's Achilles heel. AI has a glaring problem that hardly anyone is talking about. That problem is latency. Latency, in layman's terms, is the amount of time it takes for information on the internet to travel. So no matter how smart AI becomes and no matter how many billions of dollars OpenAI, Google, Microsoft, and Meta invest into AI hardware, latency is the AI bottleneck. Here's a simple example to make this more clear. Say OpenAI makes a brand new language translation tool. This tool allows you to call anyone in the world in any language and it will translate your voice and the voice of the other person on the other end of the line all in real time. It basically solves the language barrier for the entire world. Pretty incredible. The problem is that in this example, the translation tool needs the internet and needs to talk to an AI translation model in the cloud, something similar to ChatGPT, but specifically for translations. So every time you speak to Pablo, an internet request to the AI translation model needs to be made. A request to translate your voice from English to Spanish so that Pablo can understand you. This is latency. Usually all this would happen in milliseconds and you and Pablo wouldn't even notice any delay. But a lot of times requests like these can take upwards of a second or two. That might not seem like a lot, but in reality, a one to two second delay would make your call with Pablo so choppy and awkward, you'd probably end up just emailing him instead. Plus this example just uses one call to an AI model. Some AI tools can literally make 
tens to hundreds of calls to different models in the cloud. Pretty much an AI traffic jam. If just one of those requests is slow, it will make the whole tool crawl to a halt. This is a huge problem for AI without a great solution. That is, except for one thing. The answer is on-device LLMs that would live on your phone. That way there are zero internet requests. In the case of your call to Pablo, the translation will be done on your phone instantly and without delay instead of the cloud. And in this case, AI latency is solved. Samsung is actually with their AI translation tool doing this very thing on the newest S24 phones. The kicker is that Tim Cook and Apple, I believe, know this. They know AI's latency problem, and they know it's a problem Apple can solve by putting AI models directly onto their devices. Apple knows if they implement the AI directly onto phones, the AI latency problem will be solved. That alone will put them ahead of companies like Meta and Microsoft. This will make them one of the top, if not the top AI players in the entire tech sector. It doesn't matter how many Billions of dollars Zuckerberg or Sam Altman throw at buying GPUs, they will never be able to come close to competing with Apple in the personal hardware arena. Apple has over 2 billion devices in the world, and they have a 61.3 market share of all smartphones in the United States. It will be impossible for Meta and OpenAI to make their own phones at this point and play catch up. Plus there's another huge benefit of having AI models directly on devices, that is privacy and security. Right now, whenever you type anything into ChatGPT, it's stored directly on their servers somewhere. And that's not a good thing. As you know, there's tons of security breaches every day on the web. All it would take is for some rogue contractor at ChatGPT to access your private chats. Then bam, those private discussions you had with ChatGPT about how you miss your mommy could be unleashed on the internet embarrassing or even on a more serious note those passwords you accidentally pasted into a chat gpt prompt could be unleashed onto the dark web and what do you know this example actually just happened recently now if the ai model is on your phone instead of the cloud your data is secure no need to worry about your awkward and private conversations about your mommy being leaked to the world or even your passwords god forbid apple is seemingly gearing up for the strategy of on-device ai models everything aligns for this to be the case. Recently, they very quietly released an open source multimodal LLM called Ferret, one that one day could be small enough to fit directly onto the iPhone. On top of that, Apple already has their own AI neural network chips that have been incorporated into their phone since 2017. And that chip could potentially play nicely with a smaller LLM like Ferret. It's just a matter of time before these smaller models become as powerful as the big dogs like ChatGPT. To be honest, maybe that's what Apple's waiting on before they fully implement their AI strategy. The good news for them is that AI models are trending in this direction. They're getting smaller and smaller. Models like Phi 1.5 and Phi 2 are trained on 1 50th the data that ChatGPT is trained on. But in comparison, Phi and ChatGPT produce results that are almost on par with each other, while Phi still lags behind a little bit. It's only a matter of time before David overtakes Goliath in this AI race. Even if Apple puts AI models directly on their devices, Apple most likely won't rely on them alone. They'll probably use a hybrid approach, meaning they'll use a smaller on-device LLM like Ferret alongside their own cloud-based large language model. Apple has been working on their very own traditional LLM called Ajax. It's like GPT, the LLM that powers ChatGPT. So it's very likely that Tim Cook's company will use this combo of an on-device LLM and a cloud-based one like Ajax for their complete AI strategy. It will be a combo approach. By using this one-two punch, Apple doesn't have to chase the big AI players like OpenAI and Meta. Instead, this combo approach will give them the best of both worlds, a world of very low latency and privacy, along with their own cloud-based AI model, Ajax, for more complex tasks. And this combo is what could ultimately make Apple's losing approach a winner. That's it for tonight. If you want to learn more about Ferret, check out my other video, Ferret Apple's Multimodal Chatbot. No one is talking about it. You can find it right here. And if you found this video interesting, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and my free AI email newsletter at fry-ai.com forward slash subscribe. Have a great night. This is Ryan signing out. Take care.